Another piece of breaking news this morning, we can throw this tweet up on the screen. Jen Psaki, the president's press secretary, has tested positive for COVID-19. This came out yesterday evening in a statement. She says she was last around the president on Tuesday. She says when they were together, they were outside, they were more than six feet apart, and they were wearing masks. Last close contact with others in the White House was Wednesday. I'll read you a little bit more of her statement here. Obviously, this is incredibly significant as Biden is traveling overseas this morning. Um, He is also elderly. We know um, even vaccinated elderly people continue to be at the highest risk. Um, So she was supposed to travel originally on this trip with the president. She decided not to because people in her household had tested positive for COVID-19. Since then, she quarantined. She tested negative via PCR. That's the highest standard test on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But then on Sunday, she tested positive for COVID. Again, she says she hasn't had close contact in person with the president or senior members of the White House staff since Wednesday. She tested negative for four days after the last contact with the president. Um, So she's just disclosing this out of, you know, interest of full transparency. You know, there's not a lot of commentary around this. Mostly we just wanted to let you know what was going on because obviously this is someone who has Regular close contact with the president doesn't seem to have been in a, you know, in a a situation where it was likely that COVID would transmit over the past week, but still an incredibly significant development. She says she's had, of course, they're all vaccinated. Mm -hmm. um, And she says she's experiencing just mild symptoms thanks to the fact that she is, in fact, vaccinated. There were definitely a lot of eyebrows raised here in Washington. I heard some rumors because she announced that she wasn't going on the family trip because of a family emergency. And it turns out the family emergency was COVID. Now, she had contact with the president about five days ago. So at this point, it's just a wait and see period. But of course, Biden himself, I mean, meeting with the Pope, all sorts of world leaders. <laughs> yeah. If he got COVID abroad, oh, I, mean, I don't even know. If you thought the Trump thing was a show, like ha- imagine him having to get on Air Force One in a bubble. Like that would be an entire thing. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Um, he's an old man. Look, I hope, you know, I really hope he doesn't get COVID. Um, he has had a booster shot as far as I remember. Yes, a, I think that's a right. famous, you know, set shot or whatever of all of that. So just keeping you guys updated. It could be could become one of the biggest stories in the world, obviously, but we'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, so most likely... It will all go fine. Jen Psaki will recover. We certainly wish her a speedy recovery. Um, The president, because he's had minimal contact, likely to be fine as well. But significant development we wanted to bring to you this morning to keep our eye on. That's right. That's that. First up, um, the Virginia governor's race pitting Terry McAuliffe versus Glenn Youngkin is going on tomorrow. And um, there are a lot of developments here. Effectively, I just want to say from the top, Even if Terry McAuliffe pulls this thing off in a squeaker, this is already complete, utter disaster for Democrats. That's This is a state Joe Biden won by 10 points and Ralph Northam won by 9 points and that Republicans have not won a statewide race in since 2009, (laughs) okay? This is really bad, (laughs) the situation for Democrats right now. So they got caught, um, some of their allies in the Lincoln Project got caught pulling the one of the most disgraceful boneheaded stunts I have ever seen in all of politics. Let's start with those details. Um, Throw this tweet up on the screen. Okay, so there were some dudes and one lady in uh, those khaki and white button-down shirt get-ups carrying tiki torches, Mm. a la Charlottesville, very fine people, that showed up at a Glenn Youngkin event and apparently were chanting, all in for Glenn. A couple reporters picked it up, and suddenly all sorts of Democratic operatives, including Terry McCall, social media manager, yes. and MSNBC personalities and everything, were tweeting this like they were all aghast that, oh my goodness, these people and Glenn Young, they're so terrible. Well, it turns out that was all a stunt perpetrated eventually admitted to by the the Lincoln Lincoln Project. Project. (laughs) Only after, though, they got caught. I mean, I think that's a really key piece is because they're trying to spin this, the Lincoln Project Mm -hmm. people, like, oh, this was just a planned demonstration to, you know, illustrate how strongly we feel about how terrible Glenn Youngkin is. The reality is they wanted people to believe that these were genuine Youngkin supporters. And it was only after the fact when it was revealed, I think the the woman that was involved in particular got um, sort of caught as they figured out who she was and her affiliation with a bunch of Democratic Party political candidates and the Democratic Party writ large. That was how eventually it all came out. So 
that was a less than impressive moment. The Washington Post wrote it up here as well. We can throw that tear sheet up on the screen. Lincoln Project organized a group to carry torches at Yunkin event in Charlottesville. And so after the fact, Lincoln Project put out a statement. They said, today's demonstration was our way of reminding Virginians what happened in Charlottesville four years ago. The Republican Party's embrace of those values and Glenn Youngkin's failure to condemn it. We will continue to hold Youngkin accountable if he will denounce Trump's assertion that the Charlottesville rioters possessed very fine qualities. <laughs> we'll withdraw the tiki torches until then. We'll be back. So again, what really happened here is they thought they could get away with this and that people would think they would yes. be all aghast that, oh, this is the sort of people that Youngkin brings out and they still are proud of those horrific moments in Charlottesville. And it was only after they got caught that they pretended it was their intent all along to be out and out about what they were doing. There's a lot to be said here, obviously, over the Lincoln Project and how much of a clownish organization that it is. But in <laughs> reality, it is very reminiscent of the entire McAuliffe strategy. McAuliffe's strategy has just been Trump, 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 Trump. He was pressed in a recent interview about whether he regrets making it all about Trump. He says, of course not. But at every single turn, when the president went to Virginia, what did he say? He goes, Glenn Young. Duncan is just Trump in a, what does he say, like in a nice affect and a vest or something. Something like to, that. Something to that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I was probably more articulate in what I said than what Biden was. But, okay, that was his pitch. Yeah. Obama essentially said the same thing. He's like, Trumpism comes in many forms. McAuliffe, every single ad, and we have been bombarded here in Washington with the radio ads around this, is just all about Trump. Glenn Youngkin wants to bring Trump. And how is all of that working out for them? Well, Lincoln Project and McAuliffe efforts aside, and we are going to be talking a lot about this in the show, the level of discontent with Biden and the national mood of the country cannot be overstated. Go ahead and put this Fox News poll up on the screen. Now, look, it is a Fox News poll and it is an outlier, but it shows there that Youngkin pulls ahead of McAuliffe among Virginia likely voters. Now, the likely voter screen there is very important because what they say is that Terry McAuliffe is at 45% and Glenn Youngkin at 53 Once again, that is an outlier in terms of where they are. But it just shows you that among registered voters, Terry McAuliffe was leading there among 51% and 46% to Glenn Youngkin. So the reason why that there's a lot of hay made out of this poll is that the likely voter screen, which is something that not all polls do, could show you that the depressed turnout amongst registered voters and the lack of enthusiasm amongst McAuliffe voters themselves would account for what such a large swing is going to look like. Look, it's not going to be an eight-point rate. I mean, I, I would venture to say, if it is, then, oh, my God, you know, if you're Joe Biden, Ugh. well, it's, uh, it, it ain't going to be it's there. It's already bad, though. ain't going to be pretty there, my yeah. friend. But. Look, it's also not without precedent, and I think we should describe that, which is that Bob McDonnell had some you know, 25 point swing from Obama's 5% sure. to true. the 17% win that he had back in 2009. The Virginia governor's race very rarely actually sticks with the party in power in terms of the governorship. But, you know, both of us were really were of the opinion that Trump and the culture war did kind of harden and change anything. And if, if Glenn Youngkin does win, it does mean that there is a real return to at least some cross partisan voting. And that's a really bad sign for Democrats because, Crystal, what did you point to throughout the entire election? If you make it all about these white suburbanites, number one, they're fickle. Mm -hmm. And number two, their policy priorities, not exactly jiving with the rest of the entire Democratic base. Yes, yeah. very true. You um, Building a coalition around white suburban liberals is a recipe for having really mm -hmm. crappy politics, ultimately. And, you know, that's what Virginia has had. I mean, under Ralph Northam, with Democrats in full control of everything, continues to be the worst state in the country for workers. And I just think you have to look at this. And we've been saying from the beginning that the enthusiasm gap was a huge deal because, you know— whether you have some, I think you do have some pool of voters that voted for Biden and maybe even voted for Hillary Clinton and are going to turn around and vote for Glenn Youngkin. That's also a very sort of suburban right. liberal thing to do. They love to, you know, signal that, oh, they're really open, they're bipartisan, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But I think the bigger story is the fact that Democrats haven't given people any reason to bother to go vote for them. I mean, Trump is not on the ballot here, okay? Glenn Youngkin is on the ballot. So if you want to make a case against someone, you got to make the case against Glenn Youngkin. And even better, maybe make the case for what you would do if you got elected. 
The fact of the matter is, you've got at the state level, Democrats are running a, you know, 90s retread from the Clinton mm. era, who's already been governor once, who was like, people didn't hate him when he was governor, but it also wasn't, you know, some spectacular situation either. So hard to get excitement about that. Hard to get excitement about an agenda that, if he has one, he never talks about, um, which has just been all about, you know, how do I tie Glenn Youngkin to Trump in every single ad in every single way. And then you layer on top of that, you look at what the Democrats in Washington are doing. And, you know, we quoted that dude last week who was like, I've been a Democrat my whole life and I don't know why I keep bothering voting for these people. Yes. When you promise voters basic reforms that are popular and that are obvious over and over and over again, and then when you have the power to deliver, you don't do it. Yeah, your voters are going to say, I don't really care about voting for you anymore. It's not worth my time and my emotional investment because that's what it really is. I mean, the time part is significant, especially if you're a working person, you got to take time off and figure it out and the kids, all that stuff. That That is no small obstacle. But even putting that aside, there's an emotional investment involved in believing Absolutely. that a politician is actually going to be worth showing up for and actually going to deliver for you. And Democrats repeatedly, not just right now in this moment, although it's incredibly manifest in this moment, but over and over and over again, have told their voters that, you know what, we're going to promise you a bunch of stuff that we actually have no intention of ultimately delivering. So don't be shocked when you go to tell them to vote for it and they're like, no, nah, I got other things on my agenda. Thank you very much. Not that Glenn Youngkin has run some incredible campaign, but, you know, the thing that we were asking ourselves after the California results is, in California, you had a, a figure who was himself yes. very divisive, very extreme, very out of step with the California public. And so he was easy to tag with the Trump label. He was easy to paint as an extremist. Glenn Youngkin really, you know, wears that sort of like, he comes across as not scary. He comes across as this just sort of like boring dude. Yeah. And it was very difficult for Democrats ultimately to be able to, to scare people about him. And he pu he has pulled that off. Now, look, that's not to say Youngkin is going to win. Um, we have the Fox News poll, as you said, is an outlier list or the Harry Atten piece up from CNN here. Very good piece, yeah. Overall, the average of polls is basically tied. Mm -hmm. um, you can see that the Fox News poll had some things that, you know, made it understandable why it was an outlier. Yes. Um, the margin of error was fairly high. The uh, the like Trump Biden split in the voters was seemed to be tilted, you know, and not representative fully of the Virginia electorate. So overall, this race seems to be very, very, very tight. But as I said at the jump, this is a major mate already. Even if Terry McAuliffe wins by a tiny bit, this is already a total disaster for Democrats and an utter indictment of their strategy of making everything about Trump and effectively promising and little and delivering even less. Yeah, that's right. And you know, you found this. Let's go ahead and put the last tweet that we have um, for this segment, please put that up there on the screen. I find it really fascinating, the Ben Pershing tweet, which is that those who have had at least one shot of a coronavirus vaccine, a significant majority of likely voters support McAuliffe by 14 points. Okay, that's interesting. But those who have not received even one vaccine dose back Yunkin by 77 points. So this is really interesting, and it goes to a Nassim Taleb point, which we've talked about here on the show, and a tyranny of the minority, in that whenever you have a group of people who are deeply ideologically committed on a single front, and they only care about that one issue, but then you have, a set, say, a vast majority of the public, something like 70-something percent or so, which have been vaccinated and are relatively apathetic either way, 14 points you know, notwithstanding, well, then the small group, if they vote in numbers and the most enthusiastic, can have an outsized impact on the rest of the politics. Yes. And that is really what we are saying here. Especially I mean, that disparity in an off-year election. Off election especially. And we're going to get to this um, in a lot of the polling. It's going to make a lot more sense. But Virginia, very very much right now reminiscent of the entire country in the way that they are feeling about the Biden, Democrats, and the national mood generally. Yeah, there's no excitement <laughs> among yeah. the Democratic base. I just saw a new piece this morning about how black voters are sort of like, eh, 
about Terry McAuliffe yes. as well, which in the state of Virginia, as in you know most places where Democrats are competitive, you need to have significant turnout among the black, black, black population if you're ultimately going to win. Doesn't seem to be a lot of enthusiasm there. And then you have um, people on the other side who were super fired up. And these numbers have been consistent the whole time. We sort of wondered, because this is what you saw in California, mm -hmm. Democratic enthusiasm in California really lagged. And then when it came down to like the week before, suddenly people got fired up, they got engaged, they showed up to vote. And in that instance, Gavin Newsom actually dramatically outperformed even the best polls for him. That same shift doesn't seem to be happening here. Um, I can tell you someone has lived in, lives in Virginia just, you know, anecdotally, not a lot of Terry McAuliffe signs, or, signs around. Tons of Glenn Youngkin yeah, signs lot, around. Yeah. Again, operatives will always tell you signs don't vote, don't read too much into that. But there is not a lot of, like, groundswell of enthusiasm for Terry McAuliffe. He's showing up at his um, events as well. Youngkin all weekend was going to rallies with a thousand plus people, even in places in Northern Virginia yeah. that, you know, are pretty blue. He's He's got people who are excited for him. And McAuliffe was going to a bunch of different small, sparsely attended events. So, look, I'm not predicting this is going to go either way. I genuinely think it is extremely tight and extremely close and will come right down to the wire. It should not be that way in the state of Virginia today. This is a 10-point Biden state. It's a 9-point Ralph Northam state. It's a state that Democrats dominate at every level and certainly statewide at this point. The fact that Youngkin is right in there with a real shot at pulling this thing off is, um, if you're a Democrat, that's a disgrace. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.